Hi, I'm Elaine Brewster and welcome to Aspects of Energy, a program where we talk about ways to raise our energy. A lot of what we've talked about for a whole year now um, has something to do with my new book. It's a little baby book that just came out two weeks ago and um, it, it's doing really well and having really good reviews. And I really hope that it gets out there so that, um, so that people can see some other lifestyle choices. And um, one of the things that I talk about in there quite a bit is how healthy my husband was. Um, played racquetball. He took his bike to work pretty much every day, even in the snow, which did turn out to be a foolish decision a couple of times when he almost got hit. But we really believe in being energetic in our family. And I personally really believe in movement. And so we have on today, and we're so privileged to have Connie Livingston today. And she lives in Ohio, and she is a little bit older than me by just a little bit. And she's been teaching dance and exercise and movement for 50 years. And um, so why don't you tell us a little bit about you, Connie, and how you got into it. And, and then, you know, give us some things that we can do with you. You Absolutely. can see I'm in a different space today <laughs> so that I can move with Connie. Thank you, Elaine. Um, I'm happy to be here. I always love talking about uh, exercise and movement. It's uh, been such a big part of my life for so many years. And um, uh, I'm actually in Illinois and not oh. Ohio. So uh, it's yeah. Midwest anyway. Um, and everyone knows that uh, exercise is important. Uh, we have countless studies that talk about exercise. And 50 years ago, I uh, started teaching by teaching an adult evening exercise class at our high school. It was my evening out. <laughs> and it so energized me that I thought, I just want to dedicate myself to helping people enjoy movement as much as I do. And so I was asked uh, to teach those classes and they grew and they grew and they grew. And so I incorporated music and movement because I loved dance. And uh, back 50 years ago, it was all basically calisthenics, one, two, three, four, jumping jacks, toe touches, things like that. And I like to put a little uh, variety into it. So I borrowed on my dance background and, and borrowed on my gymnastic and everything else background, cheerleading I could think of, and came up with a program. And I would describe it as a functional fitness program. Uh, 50 years ago, uh, the functional fitness was getting in shape to get in a certain size dress and to um, get in shape for bathing suit season. <laughs> uh, flash forward 50 years and we're more concerned about the functionality of getting a grandchild out of a car seat and gardening. And uh, we talk about the best shop to get a bathing suit cover up. So it has changed over the years, as has exercise in general. Um, we've gone through all the phases of exercise, uh, from simple calisthenics to what I like to call Rambo aerobics, where everything was go, 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 and feel the burn and all of that sort of thing. And now the beauty is that there are so many different styles and types of exercise, Tai Chi, yoga, Pilates, um, boot camp, uh, regular strength training, swimming, that you can find something, and this is important, find something you enjoy doing and make that your program. Um, if you don't like to get your hair wet or put a bathing suit on, don't make swimming your form of exercise. Um, you will adhere to your program much better if you are doing something that, that truly lifts you mentally and, and 
physically. That's the energizing part of it all. With the, the many, many benefits of exercise, I, I kind of picked five out that, that I think are important. Um, the exercise, uh, exercise helps you prevent certain diseases. You build a better heart pump. Uh, this uh, helps protect you from heart disease, diabetes. When you have muscle tone, your muscles know what to do with the sugar and the foods that you put in. And uh, you don't store fat as much and so forth. Um, it also helps um, with your mental uh, abilities. I call it um, like doing crossword puzzles for your body. Um, we do a thing and you can do it right now because we can't just think about exercise and talk about exercise. We actually have to move a little bit. So sit nice and tall in your chairs and just walk Thank with you. your feet. Okay. And we're going to lift the hand up, the test. Up, up, out, out, down, and clap twice. If you want to see this, it is marching and up up, out, out, down, down, clap. Do it, up, up, out, out, down. Good for your brain, now speed it up. Up, up, out, out, down, down, two claps. Up, up, out, out, good. Change hands, up, up, out, out, down, down, clap twice. Up, up, out, out, down, and clap, good. Good for the brain. <laughs> and good for the body. So it, it helps um, uh, it helps make you feel better. Uh, from those that I can see on here, you were smiling. That's good. It takes your mind. It's a de-stressor. Lots and lots of, of benefits. Um, a fall is a game changer when you no matter what age you are. And by exercising and improving your balance and your strength, you really will um, help better your balance and coordination. And there are simple exercises you can do for better balance. And I like to work exercise into my daily routine almost organically. In other words, I don't have time to spend an hour and a half in a gym. Um, I wanna to try to sneak exercise in where I can. One of the very best exercises you can do for balance is simply holding a countertop or a chair and raising your heels. Looks like this. You're going to stand and just lift up, lift up. It strengthens your ankles. And it helps reset your gyroscope, that little, uh, you remember a gyroscope, you would spin it and send it down a string and up and down. And simply by doing that simple exercise, you can strengthen your ankles, which helps you with better balance, your ankles do hundreds of adjustments every time you step off a curb or go into um, uh, a rocky area. So you need to train for that. So better balance is a big, big reason well, to do exercise. Yeah. And, and um, a man who is in charge of um, a whole health system of a church that I know um, said that seniors would do a lot better if they would, in addition to that, if they would practice just standing on one leg for 30 seconds, then stand on the other for 30 seconds, he said, if they had better balance, there would be less falling, less hips breaking. I was just going to mention that. I call it standing on the rocking ship. Mm. And you stand on one foot, you load that foot, you shift it over to the other foot. Um, People often will stand on one foot while they brush their teeth or do something like that. Find ways that you can integrate exercise strength training into your, um, your daily, daily work. One of the big um, benefits 
of an exercise program, whether it's a walking program or uh, an exercise class or swimming class or anything like that, is the social engagement mm -hmm. that you get. And in my classes, we, uh, uh, we talk before class and I have a, a, a time period in the middle of the class that I call club and activity news. And during that time, people will tell things that are going on with projects they're working on. Um, we solve each other's problems. It's a, you know, someone will say, um, who knows where I can buy a 1962 Pontiac and someone will know the answer. I, I don't know how it happens, but it's just amazing. And we so need this connection, this, this time. It's 45 minutes during the day, or it's a half hour in a walking program or something like that. But it's this connection that you make with people um, that raises your mental attitude and raises your energy level. We've seen that quite a bit now from people being isolated in their homes and your energy level just goes down, down, down with that. Um, improving cognitive function is another big uh, uh, plus for doing exercise, being able to do sequential things um, and working from one exercise to the other is is also good. So many, many benefits with exercise. And I uh, like to train for things. And one of the things if you're going on a vacation that you can do is train for going on the vacation. And that means everybody is happier when you're on a vacation, if you feel good, if you have energy. And perhaps you're going to a place where there's cobblestones or something that an irregular uh, surface that you'd be walking on, multiple stairs to climb. I start people out, I, I call it fit to travel. I start people out about six weeks ahead of their destination and start working with um, different ways that they can strength train for that vacation. Besides, you can eat more of the wonderful cuisine wherever you're going too. So that's a, that's a little side plus. But if you're going on a vacation, um, you can stick a couple of simple things in your suitcase that don't take up a lot of room that can give you a whole workout. Two paper plates, okay? and a piece of tubing. This is elastic tubing, variable resistance. Okay, you take the plates and you put them on the ground, I'll get back about here, and you step on the plates. And now you have your own homemade Nordic trap right in the room back and forth. You can open the hip around and back and open the hip around and back, outer thigh, inner thigh, outer thigh, inner thigh. They're, they're wonderful for just something like that. Two paper plates. The tubing, the variable resistance, you can take and you can do bicep curls. Now variable resistance is different than using a weight. Variable resistance is easy and then it gets harder at the top and then back down again. So it strengthens your muscle a little differently than a weight. A weight, if Elaine wants to lift a weight, it's five pounds here, it's five pounds here, it's five pounds here, all the way up and down. And your body gets very used to working at a certain level or load. So for instance, if you're trying to increase your strength, you need to change things. I change my routines every two weeks because 
that keeps them fresh, uh, the music fresh, everything else fresh. And it targets muscles so that they continually um, get stronger and stronger. So for instance, if you're doing an overhead press, just a lift up and down like that, your body, if, if that's all you ever did, would get very used to lifting that amount of weight up and down. It, knew, it would know, it's so efficient, it would know exactly how much energy it would need to expend to accomplish that lift. But you can change it by simply up, down, 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 up, down, 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 up. And that changes the energy for the muscle. Hmm. And they, it, it helps make it stronger. So changing tempo or changing direction, this is eccentric contraction coming down like that, um, is one way to change it. So you don't have to keep getting a five pound weight, a six pound weight, a 10 pound weight. It allows you to use the same amount of weight, but change it with different effort. So um, that's one thing that, that, uh, that you can use with that. Um, I like the variable resistance. It works the muscle a little differently. It is easy to pack in a suitcase and take with you. Um, and it's just another variety, different way to, to work and work out. So there's, there's all sorts of different things. You give two paper plates to your four-year-old grandson and tell him to ice skate around the room, they're in heaven. And uh, so I like to make exercise a family uh, affair, a family event. You're the models. You're the role models right now. They're watching you to see what they're going to be like when they are a little bit older. And so it, it's important that you give them good, good uh, heart healthy habits. And so paper plates are great uh, for that. Um, I took a, I taught a class for the school systems in, um, in the Chicago area uh, when they were cutting down on having gym teachers. Uh, but the teachers needed a break. The children needed it, that physical activity. I took paper plates. They could stand right next to their desk. And we did all of our, our skiing and all of that. And I took the tubing and they did their exercise. In five or six minutes, wow. they, were, they were working out. And so, again, you, you don't have to have a big, uh, expensive uh, gym in your house, you can you can utilize a lot of lot of things that way. Um, so it's you know the benefits and the studies. That's what's been so enjoyable for me over the years is more and more and more uh, has come out about the many benefits of exercise, and we all know that turning the key in the car and getting to class, you're thinking, uh, 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 I don't know if I want to go or I've got so many other things to do, but you're always happy once you go to class and you come back and you say, boy, I'm glad I did that. Boy, I'm glad I went on that walk. Um, it's, um, it, it just really, it, it energizes you and it's good for you. And I, um, I plan to do it for, I mean, this is only my first 50 years so, of teaching. So, you know, I've probably got a few more left in me and I, I enjoy it. I have wonderful people in my classes. We are a community of supportive, uh, loving people. And uh, so that's, uh, that's it. Exercise is good for you. We know it. And it's just a matter of prioritizing it and making it a habit. 
if it becomes a habit, like brushing your teeth, then you'll tend to stick with it and, and, and do it and find a exercise buddy or go to a class. It's not easy doing it at home by yourself. And I can't tell you the number of people that, you know, will get a uh, exercise video or something like that and put it on and have their coffee <laughs> and sit there and watch the person on television exercise. That doesn't work. <laughs> you have to actually do the movement. So um, I, uh, I just want to encourage everybody to, to get, get active and get moving and um, help keep your independence as you get older, because it's a, a, a big part of that is how physically you feel and, and how much you enjoy um, moving and being around people, a big part of it. Um, any questions that you might have on? You'll, you'll just this? have to unmute yourselves if you've got a question. You know, you know I, I have taught all ages. I, I did a children's class, fit, uh, Future Fit. Um, I teach women. Um, I, I trained the former uh, uh, lightweight, heavyweight boxing champion of the world, Montel Griffin. So uh, they sent me to Las Vegas to uh, train this boxer, which was uh, a, a fun experience. And so any level that you're at, it's never too late to start. I did the uh, hospital classes at our local hospital and to see someone carry a, a, a cup of coffee across the room without spilling it mm -hmm. and that be the biggest part of their day, that's very, very encouraging. So any age, any time, it's never too late, you can uh, get something going. You know, Connie um, teaches generally in fellowship halls. And, mm -hmm. um, and so let me come back to that in a sec. But another thing you said reminded me um, in our fellowship hall, we used to have a, a gal who taught aerobics and she was really cute. It was back in the hooked on aerobics age. Oh, yeah. And she said, you know what? I'm going to exercise anyway. You may as well come and do it with me. And, yes. and she had been a ballroom dancer. And so she was really energetic. And, um, and there was a lady. So we were all younger at the time. This is many, many years ago. But there was a lady at the time who was 72. So that was about twice our age. And she was doing full range sit-ups full range. Oh, I, right. And we looked at her and just went, how are you doing that? And mm. she said, well, my mom was really into exercise. And so I started exercising with her when I was about 10, because it was fun, because she was doing mm. it with someone else. And she said, I just never quit. That's the key. Don't quit. And, and you see, um, uh, dancers like Carol Lawrence and others that have always done that and always danced and, mm -hmm. and still love it. And so the idea is to get started. That's why you want to get started with something you really enjoy doing, because then you'll adhere to that program much longer. And I, I teach, as you say, out of fellowship halls uh, in churches. It, it, uh, they're nice and big and open, and they don't have mirrors. I've found that sometimes people get intimidated. They have in their mind's eye what they're looking like as they're doing their stuff. And you put a mirror in front of them and it's like, ah, is that me? Yeah. So it, it um, you know. We have fun. We do have fun in class. Um, they're they're um, also in this in this group, you know, a long time ago, um, because it was just in a fellowship hall, we would bring our children and they would just, mm -hmm. you know, play over on the edge. And um, and I noticed that a lot of times 
you know, they were over there, they're three years old, but they were trying to do the moves. And all of those children grew up to where exercise is meaningful to them. They still, these kids are now, I guess about 36 and older and they still exercise. And, and so you're right. You know, right. what we are doing is a role model for them. Well, I, I have a couple of second generation people in my classes now. <laughs> and we have, uh, I have uh, uh, several times somebody will bring a granddaughter in to exercise and it's always fun. Yeah. Uh, they bring an energy into the room simply by walking into it. And uh, just the other week, we had a little four-year-old in and we were doing our exercises and she had her little exercise outfit on and she spent the whole, she just jumped, jump, 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 jump and all, all around. And, uh, you know, I thought, heavens, I'm not the peppiest one in the room. And, and she was, uh, she was just great. So Excellent. Thank you so much. Any, You're welcome. Any thoughts from any of you wonderful people that you want recorded for posterity? <laughs> oh, thank you. You've given us a lot to think of. I'm, I'm just wishing you had a Zoom for your fellowship hall. Oh, so that we yes. Flew I'm not that it. techie. <laughs> oh, and do it with you. That's one of the things that has really kept me saying during this pandemic is exercising with a gal that I signed up with prior to the pandemic. And so she had to become, you know, she had to change with the change of time and started yes. doing her exercise class on Zoom. Mm -hmm. And so Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and any other time during the week she records it, that you can pull it up and exercise to her Zoom classes or her exercise classes. So right. I what really do. Are, Dawn Marie, what time zone are you? I'm I'm a Pacific. That's what I thought. Okay. So it's 12 to one on those days. And it's just kept me sane. It's kept me balanced. It's kept me mindful of all the sitting that I'm doing and watching what I'm eating. And so um, if I don't do that, then to just get up and move, like you said, Connie, I get up and go walking mm -hmm. just to get a little form of exercise in and get out and commune with nature. So thank you so much well, for your tips today. Thank you. Well, you know, uh, general good health is a three-legged stool. It's exercise on one leg. It's nutrition because you can out eat any exercise program very quickly. <laughs> For so sure. it's, it's, it's exercise, it's nutrition, and it's good sleep and hydration. Yes. Key. Yes. You need all three, otherwise you'll topple over. Yes, I agree. Have you seen, um, have you seen, you know, I'll call them miracles, but, you know, or turnarounds. Have you seen people that you felt like started at this level and then you noticed them Oh, definitely. And their ability and maybe even uh, the, content, the, the contentment, the relaxation they feel. I, I have probably spun off 12 or so women that became instructors. They liked it so much um, that they wanted to teach on their own and they might have specialized more in the uh, yoga part of it, uh, because we do a little of everything in class. Uh, so a lot of, of people, I call it getting turned on to uh, exercise. Uh, absolutely. And one time we were doing, you know, sit ups, and there was a woman in class and she screamed and I thought, oh, no, <laughs> what happened? And she said, that's the first time in my life I have ever done a full sit up. Yeah. Even in high school, she said I couldn't do that. So, you know, we all cheered. <laughs> and she had a community there to cheer for her. Absolutely. Wow. Um, I don't think I realized there were so many benefits. Thank you for delineating those for us also and giving us some great ideas. Oh, thank you, Connie. You're and welcome. You. Oh, I'm happy All to do you. it. Wow. Did you know that um, 
that frowning takes more muscles than smiling. And I know. So I have heard smiling that. is just a wonderful thing to do to end exactly. our program today to um, to encourage all of that goodness that goes through our whole being. And of course, it doesn't just help us. It helps everyone else that we talk to and smile to, especially right. if we're smiling with our voice. Exactly. <laughs> well, I'm going to get this out. And um, there was one lady that couldn't get on today. So I'll send that to her. And you're welcome to send this out to, to anyone you want. And okay. just so you know, um, my new website just got active yesterday and all of my previous programs are on that website. And, um, and so you can find them and find the URL and send them to people. What's you know, your website? Um, elainebrewster.org. Elaine Brewster or B R E W S T E R. Okay. Well, thank you again. Thank you for having me. Actually, maybe go out and play in the snow. Most of us, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Or snow shovel. <laughs> yeah, or that. We do that. That's my exercise some days. All right. See you later. Thank you.